Welcome. Introduction to Cisco Packet Tracer. In this video, we will discuss what is Cisco Packet Tracer, how you can download it, and a basic overview of the workspace. At the end, we will build a simple network so you understand some of the functionalities comes with it. So what is Cisco Packet Tracer? Cisco Packet Tracer is developed and maintained by a large company called Cisco Systems, which is a well-known organization for building, engineering, and manufacturing network systems. The software is completely free. However, it is closed sourced. You can download the software from the Cisco website, and it includes all the functionalities of simulation environment. So basically, Cisco Packet Tracer is used for network simulation. Network simulation allow students, professionals, and others to simulate network environment using their own computers without having to buy expensive equipment. You can look at it as a program that allow you to play with network devices without having that physical device with you. So there's a difference between simulation and emulation. What a simulation does is it is replicating the software and its general behaviors based on a set of instructions coded into the program. Emulation basically means it takes both the hardware and software and replicating it one-to-one. -one. You don't have to worry about the difference between simulation and emulation, but just so you know that the Cisco Packet Tracer is a simulation software. Next, we will see how we can download the Cisco Packet Tracer and build a simple network. To download Cisco Packet Tracer, you have to go to the Cisco Network Academy website. The web address is netacad.com, netacad.com. And once you enter that website, somewhere on the page, you will see an option for Packet Tracer. This page changes over time. So it may not be the same as it is right now when you visit it but just look for the item called Packet Tracer. You can click on it, and on the Packet Tracer page, you will have two options or a couple of options to register for Packet Tracer programs. You can pick any one of them. So let's say I want to pick this 10 hour option, so it's, you can click on View Course, and you can go sign up today or you can pick this two hour course, you can go view source course and get started. On this page, if you already have an account, you can log in to download the Cisco Packet Tracer or you can sign up for a new account, either a standalone account with Cisco or you can use a third party provider such as Google. And once you have that account, and you logged in, you would be able to download Cisco Packet Tracer file, and then you can install it on your computer for personal and academic use. Now, if you cannot find this website for whatever the reason, you can always go to Google and search for Cisco Packet Tracer, and the very first link or very few first link should get you to a page where you can download the software for personal use. After you have installed Cisco Packet Tracer and opened the software, you will be greeted with a login screen. Use your username and password credentials you just created on the website to log in, and then you will be able to access the workspace. So the blank workspace looks like this. At the top, just like many other softwares, you will see a bunch of drop-down menus such as File, Edit, Options, View, Tools, Extensions, Window, and Help. On the File menu, 
you have the option to create a new file and also save your files into different locations of your in your computer or a network drive and you also have the option to print in the future i will discuss the important menu items such as under options the preferences which you can use to manipulate how the environment behave but for now just so you know that some of these options are very important in order for you to manipulate the workspace to whatever the systems that you like to uh, simulate there are two major workspaces one called logical the other one called physical the difference between logical and physical is significant in terms of how uh, it looks and feel but how it function is exactly the same there is no difference between a logical uh, diagram and a physical diagram it just the look and feel is different i will explain the uh, difference between logical and uh, physical in a different video but for now just so you know there is two different workspaces in a typical educating educational environment uh, or a testing environment we typically use the logical workspace because that will allow us to teach uh, basics of networks engineering and network sciences uh, by just using logical diagrams and logical uh, components in the logical environment you can drag and drop different components to build network topologies these components are located on the bottom left hand corner and they are categorized into different categories for example network devices end devices components connections etc etc under these categories there are subcategories for example in network devices we have routers switches hubs wireless devices and so on and same with the end devices there are few categories and you can drag and drop any of these items to build your network now let's see how we can build a simple network just to demonstrate how packet tracer works so in this example i'm going to go to end devices and i'm going to create a peer to peer network i'm going to drag and drop a pc and i'm going to drag and drop another pc i'm just going to keep the names as pc0 and pc1 then i'm going to go to connections as you can see there are few connections available i will not explain what these connections means like how uh, different they are technically in this video however i will explain that in the future just for now you should know there are different types of cables such as console cables copper straight through cables crossover cables fiber etc etc for now we're going to pick the copper crossover cable and i'm going to select pc0 and i'm going to select the ethernet connection and i'm going to select pc1 and i'm going to select its ethernet connection now as you can see you have a connection between two pcs pc0 and pc1 to create a a peer to peer network i'm going to open the pc1 by clicking on it i'm going to select desktop and under ip configuration i'm going to enter a static ip address so it will be 192.168.2.1 and i'm going to leave it as 255.255.255.0 and i'm going to go to pc1 and this time under desktop and static i'm going to put 192.168.2.2 and subnet mask as 255.255.255.0 
By doing so, PC0 and PC1 now has a network connection. So another easy thing that we can learn in Packet Tracer is that once you enter configuration, sometimes you it's really annoying to just keep going back to check what data we have been entered. To avoid this, you have some tools we can use. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to enter a note. I want to know for sure this is 192.168.2.1 and not having a, any confusion. So at the top here, there's an option to enter a note. That's this one, place a note. I'm going to put it here and I'm going to say 192.168.2.2. I believe it's 2.1 maybe. Let's see. Yeah, it's 2.1. And then I'm going to enter another note here saying it's 192.168.2.2. Now let's see if we can test these two uh, devices, the peer-to-peer -peer devices, if they can ping each other. So if you click on one of the PCs, in this case I clicked on PC0, and if you go to command prompt, and if I ping 192.168.2.2, which is this PC, which is directly connected to PC0, and press enter, and you will get a reply back. That because of the ping goes through this wire, go to PC1 and a the PC1 send a reply back and you can see the reply back from PC1. And this is a basic network, peer-to-peer -peer network on Packet Tracer. In the future, I will also explain how the real-time versus simulation environment works and how we can build a little bit of a complex or a little bit more advanced network than just a peer-to-peer -peer network on Packet Tracer. Until next time, have a nice day.